Welcome to Chris's Storytelling Corner. This is Christopher Moldong. Today I'm going to do a movie review for the Chinese movie, The Devotion of Suspect X. Here is the synopsis. Uh, the Devotion of Suspect X follows a professor assisting in a murder investigation, only to find that a longtime rival and friend from its early university days may be involved. Be sure to check out my reading of Homesickness, pages 4 to 6, and my manga review for Dawn of the Arcana, uh, volumes 1 to 3. Next week, I'll have a manga review for Dawn of the Arcana. Uh, volumes 4 to 6, a reading of Homesickness, pages uh, 7, to 10, uh, 7 to 11, and a movie review for The Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. You can check out my author's website at www.chrismodon.com. You can buy my first novel, a fantasy adventure called The Mustard Prince in the Condiment Kingdom, for $4.99. Also, for $2.99, you can buy my short story collection, a collection of 10 short stories and the horror, fantasy, and realistic fiction genres. Check out my Twitter page and author's Facebook page. Links to all these will be provided on the description. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel if you're on YouTube, or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. So the way that this is going to work is that I'm going to give a recap of the events that happen in the movie, and then I will give my thoughts on uh, the movie, the plot, the characters, and whatnot. So, the devotion to Suspect X. We have a body washes up on the riverbank of uh, Jiang Bay. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna butcher these names, by the way. So if I get these names wrong, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just, I, I can't really pronounce them. So I know I'm gonna butcher these names. So just to tell you, a town in the northeastern city of Harbin. Uh, Though some effort was made to obscure the victim's face and fingerprints, he's quickly identified as Fujian, who is pretty much just deadbeat husband and dad. Um, so, even though his ex-wife Jing and her teenage daughter uh, Zhao Jin have alibis to prove their innocence, a hunch leads Detective Luo Mao to consider Jing as the prime suspect. So. Uh, the detective and his partner goes to Jing's apartment. Jing says that she was watching a movie with her daughter on the night of the murder, April 12, and has just so happens to have a movie ticket to prove it. Uh, while this is going on, we see Professor Tang Xuan uh, give a lecture on this, I think it's called a sound generator that was used in a case. Pretty much you can shoot it at another car, break the windows, but also, like, um, distort a person's, like, brain, also, <laughs> pretty much. It's pretty much revealed right off the bat that Jing and Zhao Zhen have indeed killed, uh, Fu, uh, albeit by accident. What happened was, um, he came in, he rang the doorbell incessantly, Jing, uh, answered the door, Shi Hong, their neighbors, overhearing this, and then uh, what happens is that uh, Fu starts getting very violent with both his ex-wife and daughter, and both of them pretty much kill him with like a cord, and uh, I think like a trophy or something like that. So their rec their neighbor, uh, Shi Hong, he's, he's a re like this recluse. Reclusive math teacher overhears the commotion and he offers to help them get out of the mess. So like hide the body and, and whatnot. So Tang Xuan, a prof a professor, um, he takes interest in the investigation when he learns that the lead suspect's neighbor was an old junior high classmate of his. Uh, there are flashbacks to their school days and it reveals how the friendship developed over 
uh, pretty much just mathematical sparring. Uh, we also see Shi Hong and Tang Shuan um, kind of meet up. They eat together. He actually, Tang actually helps um, Shi Hong readjust his watch, which he tries to use as evidence. It doesn't happen. So, what happens is that Shi Hong starts taking pictures of Jing and her daughter, and it's just of uh, like Jing going out or her daughter doing stuff and, and whatnot, and sends them to Jing. It's kind of like a blackmailish type thing. Um, later, we see Shi Hong revealing that he's going to target Jing's daughter, uh, Xiao Xin. However, his, the whole time, his real target was Professor Tang Chuan using the sound generator. So he actually steals the sound generator. He goes in a car and tries to attack him with this sound generator. And actually does attack him um, with it. But it doesn't like kill him. It, it does cause an accident but doesn't kill him. It just leaves him injured. Uh, meanwhile, the other the police are tracking down a bus that uh, Jing's daughter is on, and nothing has happened to that bus. Shi Hong then turns himself in. In prison, uh, he reveals how he put pretty much all the blame of the murder onto himself. He hid evidence in his apartment and used a vagrant as a body double for Fu. It's also revealed that the time of death was not on April 12, but on April 11. Um, we're also shown how Jing and her daughter saved his life. He was actually going to hang himself, but then they rang his doorbell just by accident. And um, I think he buys a book of hers. Or no, no, he gives her, uh, the daughter, a book of his, and he's pretty much decides not to hang himself. So, um, T. Chon, uh, visits Shi Hong in prison. They kind of just talk, you know, it's like, how could you do this? You're so smart. How, how did, you know, stuff like this happen to him? So, after that visit, Shi Hong, thinking that he has beaten Tang Chong, runs into Jing, who is being escorted by police. Jing reveals that she was a killer. Early in the movie, I believe it was in the mountain scene, um, Tang Chuan was explaining how he caught one, how they solved a case, and it's pretty much the, the suspect was just so guilty of what he did that he turned himself in. So, in a case of I don't know, karma, irony, I don't know what you want to call it. Jing <laughs> turned herself in pretty much. Uh, and that's a pretty sad scene. You actually see Jing and uh, Shi Hong just kind of on their knees crying. Like, why are you doing this? Like, he almost got away with it. So at the end of the movie, uh, Tang Chuan passes by a handcuff and police escorted Shi Hong. It was in an elevator, actually. While holding a book that Shi Hong gave to Tang Chuan. Uh, Shi Hong inquires if the puzzle is hard, but uh, Tang Shan says that he's already solved it. So, some thoughts. Um, this was actually based on the Galileo Japanese novel series. It's actually the third book of the series. I have not read any of the books, so I cannot make a comparison of the book from the movie I, I heard that like the professor actually has a girl like a girlfriend that the detective was a lot more incompetent from what I heard um, or from what I just read from other reviews and whatnot but for the most part I cannot really speak of how um, the the book is like so it was filmed in mainland China uh, not in Hong Kong so I found that out uh, you got to see like the mountain scene that was pretty cool um, the apartment that they live and, and whatnot 
uh, you got to see stuff stuff like that. So that that was pretty interesting as well. Uh, some of the characters, Tang Chuan, definitely had like a Sherlock Holmes type, you know, he makes all these deduct, you know, assumptions, he deduces things until he, he comes up with an answer. Oh yeah, well, she did this, well, you know, oh she, you know, then this happened, oh well, he, you know, she's a killer or like whatnot, you know, she's uh, like the primary suspect and whatnot. Uh, he's really smart, really bright, um really competitive apparently as well as shown with uh his early dealings with Xi Hong and um just very capable you know <laughs> Xi Hong was definitely the star of the show though um he was definitely a very um I wouldn't want to say like a disturbed individual but he, he was just very like he was actually a good guy you know because what he did for Jing was wasn't just out of like love or, or but it was based upon emotion you know that he plotted this whole thing to have all the blame of this murder put on himself. Um, so he's a very caring individual. He, he's he actually did end up killing someone though. He killed the vagrant, so he's not totally innocent as well. But he's also really smart too. He plays this game of cat and mouse. Okay, I do you know like I'm gonna put this body here and it's gonna be totally wrecked oh you think it's this guy nope it was this guy haha <laughs> you know like he he, he, he kind of knew the moves that the police would do in order for him to get arrested so that was really interesting uh, he so yeah he is really smart and very I say he, he was he wasn't a bad guy at all you know he wasn't much of a bad guy he didn't even like he had the chance to kill Tang Chuan it's just he didn't he, he had the sound generator at like the lowest possible like output so it wouldn't kill him you know um, but he just he got really emotional and uh, pretty much did things based upon his emotion. Jing is... Throughout the whole movie, I'd say with her, you can tell she displayed her guilt pretty well. She always seemed like, oh, I should turn myself in. I should turn myself in. And seeing the way she just kind of like goes about her everyday life, like she has a chip on her shoulder even while she's working or like you know she's trying to just cover up this bad thing that she did and she, you can tell she's just having a hard time with it um generally pretty innocent you know there's kind of a plot hole here i don't know chinese law okay i i, I don't i know in american law if you're attacked and then in, in a and then you defend yourself and sh have some evidence to show that you were in indeed acting in self-defense that she would ultimately have be able to not get like arrested because of self-defense I, I don't know if that's the case in in, in China I I, I that kind of threw me off a bit. It's like, yeah, why don't you turn yourself in? Like, you can In the U.S., I'd just be self-defense. You, you know, there's probably some sort of markings, you know, because the dude kept slapping her and slapping the daughter. <laughs> you know, it's like, there's probably some case of like, hey, I'm defending myself. This guy was attacking me. We kind of had to do what we had to do. It's, it's kind of weird. Um... 
That was kind of one plot hole there that, like, once again, it could just be a law thing. I don't know. Um, the friendship between Shi Hong and, and Tang Chuan is actually really interesting. Um, actually one of the stronger parts of the movie. Um, they obviously, you know, to the very, it's funny because, like, they were playing these math, you know, some mathematical sparring games, trying to outsmart each other, and that's how they connected early on. And at the end of the movie, Shi Hong was, they were still essentially playing the same game. It's like, oh, hey, I outsmarted you, Tang. <laughs> you know, like, I wanted this to happen because the fact that matters with Shi Hong is that the guy's a recluse. The guy lives by himself. He doesn't really talk to anyone. He has a job. It's like, you know, he just, like, reads books. He, he, at the end of the movie, when he gets arrested and put in prison, he's just looking at this, like, mathematical problem in his head. I mean, he's just by himself. Well, he's not even, like, truly by himself, but, you know, it's essentially not that much different than his real life. He's just kind of like, okay, I'm just by myself, doing my thing, thinking about math. It's cool. <laughs> like, okay. Like, hey. And, you know, I got to save... You know, Jing, in the process. Cool, you know? Um, that's that's the thing with Xi'an, you know? It's like, okay, I'll just make myself the killer, you know? Put it all on me. And um, there's always this, like, cat and mouse thing going on with Xi'an and, and Tang Chuan because, like, there's, like, the watch. He'll confront him about the watch. Um, they're on the mountain. They, they speak philosophy and, and whatnot. Um, and for, like, even at the end of the movie, like, they're still, like, friends in a sense, where it's like, Shi Hong doesn't hate him, he even asks him, hey, how, how's the, you know, how's that puzzle you're doing? Oh, it's cool, you know, like, yeah, done with it, okay, cool, you know, it wasn't like, they, they seem to have still been quite cordial with each other, even at the very end of the movie. So they had a really interesting relationship, because, like, Tang is, like, you know, Shi Hong comments how he still looks young. Uh, Tang is, is real young, real sharp, um, super sleuth. Shi Hong lives a pretty decrepit life. Students don't really respect him. He's really good at what he does. He's really smart, but... He's just kind of like a middling type of person. So uh, you get to see some sort of like clash there as well. Uh, one thing that also with the movie that kind of threw me off was the fact that early on. So with murder mysteries, you generally figure out that or you're pretty much shown a lot of times near the end of the movie how this murder happened and, and the big reveal okay what really happened how did this murder happen who's guilty and whatnot i was initially thrown off because you actually get the reveal pretty early on that jing and her daughter killed the ex-husband and that shi hong hid you know helped them to kind of like um Put the guilt on, on him, hide the body, and whatnot. So I, I'm kind of wondering, watching early on, it's like, okay, the movie's not over. They're already revealing the murder. Like, where does this go? And that really threw me off. But this this movie actually kind of did a kind of 180 to you in in a sense because you the reveal then becomes the plan of Shi Hong the whole time. It, it, you know, it, it's like, oh, hey, he wanted to pin everything on himself, like, the whole time. And that's the big reveal. And how did he do that? Not the murder itself. So, that, in a sense, this movie is really good at, um, kind of, like, you know, throwing a feint at you in a sense like okay look at this but in reality something else is to come um and, and, and 
that's pretty much what happened. You know, it's like, okay, here's the murder, but the true big reveal is Shi Hong's master plan, you know, that almost happened. Um, but th there are a lot of things, like, that I, there was a lot of that in this movie. Uh, you can see Shi Hong, um, he, he's running through, uh, like, the city, just, like, having a, a, a run, and they'll pass by, like, homeless people. And it turns out the homeless people, one of the homeless people, will be used later on. So, uh, they, they really just, like, what you see early on is actually important later in the movie. You just don't know how it's going to be used, but it will be used. The sound generator thing, um, the watch was put to use. Um, the vagrant who, who's like the homeless guy and, and whatnot. So, uh, th yeah, that I, I thought the movie overall. So, so the movie overall, uh, I'll, I'll say this: it, I wouldn't say it's a great movie. It was a good movie. Uh, I thought it was a solid effort. Acting was good. Everything was good. Like the acting was good. The plot was good. Uh, the big like. Kind of like the twist at the end was good. Uh, like the big reveal was good. Like there wasn't there wasn't anything that was too out of place. They didn't jump the gun with anything. Nothing was too well. Maybe the sound generator thing, but otherwise, nothing was too unbelievable. It was just a very solid effort. Like I, you know, I would give it like a solid B. You know because. The, what, for the most part, there's just really nothing wrong with the movie. The pacing was good, too. You know, I watched the whole movie throughout, and I'm just like, that was good. This kept me up. I watched that 10 at night on a weekday, and I was like, hey, this is in the theaters. And I was like, hey, it kept my attention the whole time. So that's all for today. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel if you're on YouTube. Or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. Thank you for listening to this movie review. Next week, I will review Dawn of the Arcana, Volumes 4-6. to six, Have a story reading of Homesickness, pages 7-11. to 11, And a movie review for The Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. Thank you, and until next time.